Okay, well, I read the engineer's report last night and I had a bit of a look around and I understand the issues. Um, so with uh, this in mind, I'll work backwards. The um, very kind clip by the Canadians is actually kind of not terribly correct. Um, and uh, the issue is exactly as the engineer's report suggests, this retaining clip down here in the bottom here. Now, uh, it's a bit hard to do the whole torch thing, but you can see that it has two holes and um, it, it doesn't rotate when the lever rotates. The lever is now on the back. Uh, but you can see that the piston, such as it is, comes out. Now, the engineer's report identifies that this retaining clip in here is actually not necessarily always correctly placed. So it actually just simply screws down in there. So you can see the, the threads down in there that it screws into. And so basically what it's designed to do is when this lever is in its, in, in the designer's opinion is all the way over, it wants to actually stop there. Now, your brakes should be set up by tensioning the cable that goes through here so that that is sufficient travel to, you know, fully squeeze down on the brakes. If you go further over, then those ball bearings, which, uh, again, I'll put in my blog article, which I'll link into below, those ball bearings will may pop out of their little runs. So to adjust this, I've used a pair of needle nose pliers, which is quite a, a common technique to put down into there to be in those holes. Now, obviously there are circlet pliers that are perfect for this, but you can see that I can turn that a little bit either way. So you want to have it adjusted so that when <clears throat> you move your lever over, that you can feel it binding about here. Now, uh, remember when you're adjusting these things, Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So let's go in there and go make it a little bit further to the right, and it will actually now bind a little bit further over than it did before. That's a good thing because if you need more than that amount of travel to activate your brakes, that's a bad thing. Now, while you've got it all apart, I actually consider it's a really good idea um, to add a little bit of lubricant into your system, and I discovered when I was looking around it that there is indeed a lubrication point. If you look down here in that little tiny hole, you can see that you're looking at the back side of the caliper. Um, so the piston that moves and the ball bearings and the springs are on that side and the pads are over on this side. Now you don't want to soak it. You, you know, you just don't want to soak it. But I squirted a little, I mean a really little tiny couple of drops of um, what I call Lanox, which is a product available here in Australia. I don't recommend WD-40. Um, I just totally can't recommend WD-40. Um, so if you go for any um, product that, uh, maybe even just a, a machine oil would be enough, you know, like uh, sewing machine oil would, would be better than nothing. It's currently not very well lubricated. Uh, and after I lubricated mine, it all felt a lot better. So this goes on. And now that's a hexagonal nut surface. And as I mentioned in the other video, this retaining, where'd it go? Ah, over here. This retaining bolt is, is open at the end to allow you to get your hex key in to adjust the brakes, right? So now that I've got that on there firmly, I'll put some fresh it doesn't need to be very tight, especially if you use Loctite, but I'll put some fresh Loctite on there, that you can actually get your key down in here to adjust how far the piston comes out by turning that. And that's exactly what you want. Now, I'll take this offline and put it all together again, but, um, well, actually, no, I'm back on a muscle, I'll do it while I'm here. Um, I'll just need to put the pads in. Now, the, the disc pads, tiny little things that they are, uh, held in place by magnets. So this is the disc pad from the inside just to keep it even and this is the one from the outside. Now you can just see that they just hold on by magnets. 
there's no real magic in um, in taking the, the pads on, on or off. So basically, you just put the pads in so that those little tabs are visible. So let me just do that so that you guys can see it. So I'm just grabbing that tab with the needle nose pliers. So this goes in that hole there and then just sits down there and the magnet takes it. And that is now held in correctly so that there is, I'll have to adjust it on the scooter, but there's now some pad showing and you can see that it can't go any further over there. But really, it shouldn't be going over much further than that anyway because, I mean, that's, that's actually going past where the metal is and you'd be rubbing on the metal disc. Uh, the metal disc back backing plate there, which would mean you'd worn through all of your pad, which would mean that it's time to replace those $2 pads. So to get all of it in, you actually need to take this back part out because that um, essentially holds in uh, both pads and you can't actually take the pads out with this amount of pad on them, probably you can when they're dead, but you'll need to unscrew that to get them out anyway, in my, in my view. So uh, let's just grab him and put him in there like that. And hang on a second. Rats. Hard to do this looking at the screen and doing the video. Uh, oh, yeah. So he's a little bit, a little bit tight to go in there. So, uh, I'll have to adjust this pad back out again to allow him to fit in there. So then he can fit in, and then I'll just allow him to connect up, and the magnet will catch it. So now the magnet has caught it. And I can then just adjust this part back down again and then tighten up my grub thread. Now I had it set so that it was about that far, which is about that. So there is some pad coming out. Uh, yep, that's probably plenty there. So now I've got pad visible on both sides. Not so much on this side then, so I'll have to actually adjust him back up. You can see that that pad is now starting to become visible. You don't need Loctite on the um, screw on this side because it will actually loosen by tightening the pad, so therefore it's self-locking. This one um, on the inside has the small uh, grub thread. You don't need to take it out. I have previously put Loctite on it. So now I'll just give it a bit of a tighten down so that it's kind of like just finger, finger tight. And all it's doing is essentially biting against the threads on the ends of that to prevent vibration from encouraging it out. And that's all it is. It's just a little locking mechanism. So now, if your caliper is actuating correctly and if you have done those adjustments and if you have seen that the uh, piston was too far out, then now you've actually solved your problem and this is good to go. It is now tuned up, ready to roll. If you uh, want peace of mind, just pull it all apart. It literally isn't rocket science and that solves the problem. If it's buggered, then I am quite sure if you contact your supplier, they will send you another one of these for free. Now, it's three bolts. One, two, three to take it off. You don't need to loosen these. You don't need to change anything else. You just need to take this off and do it. So I'll update my blog post to get rid of some of those other confusing videos. And now that this is done and ready to roll, um, let me just check that gap. Yeah, that's pretty close actually because the, the, the disc is two millimeters thick. So I might need to adjust that back out again to get it to fit, but that's okay. And again, you want this over on this side, the cable to come through, and you want your brake to be hitting and engaging on your disc with no more than that movement, right? So there it is. If you're going all the way over here, you really need to back it back over to here because that's plenty of movement. You know, you don't, you don't want to run a marathon when you pull a lever. 
and it's designed to all provide pressure in the first part of its movement. Okie dokie. Well, I hope that helps everyone. Um, best wishes.